Mm. Hello, everyone. <clears throat> How is everyone doing on this Monday evening? <laughs> Woo. It's a very busy day. <laughs> At least I had a busy day. <laughs> so uh, it looks like there there might be some uh, buffering going on with uh, the speed tonight. So we'll we'll see what happens. But uh, uh, I am recording it on my end, and if worst case scenario, I will upload the uh, uh, full version tomorrow. But uh, we'll. We'll go forward and, and see how uh, how it goes. So just wanted to uh, let you know up front. <clears throat> My name is Kurt and I'm a dad who draws. And this, this is our Monday Night Live. We get together every Monday night and Wednesday night. And Mondays we usually are drawing some type of landscape or seascape. Something in the environment, generally speaking. And then on Wednesdays, we've been drawing portraits, but it looks like uh, we're going to, we ran a little poll, a little test, a little poll in our Facebook group, and we're going to switch over to full body, a more character uh, design aspect uh, for the next four uh, Wednesdays. So um, that should be a nice change of pace for everyone. We'll be looking at uh, clothing and, and just the whole figure. I'll pick out some interesting poses that I think will work. So anyhow, I just wanted to uh, welcome everyone and glad you're here. And I'm not sure when you'll be watching this, but uh, I've got some cool things I want to show you here. I did pick out this uh, picture of the Grand Tetons and some bison that are grazing. And I think this will make a great, um, a great live stream tonight as we once again really practice uh, drawing with value and creating depth by uh, creating lighter values and things up close uh, will be showed as darker value or a far more contrast. So uh, here we are at our uh, drawing and uh, let me show you a couple things on this first. I went ahead early and I actually blurred it uh, blurred the image quite a bit so that we can really get a sense where our values lies because when we're drawing we are dealing really with two things is our line quality and our values so this just shows you uh where our values are going to fall on this piece you could see that the uh, most contrast are going to be the things up close as we get in that mountain in the background it starts to fade away and one other thing I did, and I think that you would find this to be interesting, is I converted it to uh, black and white. So this also helps us to determine where our darkest darks are and where our lightest lights are. So in a sense, you can see that in the trees in the foreground, that's where we're going to have uh, most of our contrast and value. And then you get one step behind that and you get to the mountain range. And then, of course, one step behind that, and we get into the sky, all right? And the last little thing I want to show you is I uh, inserted uh, I inserted this uh, moon, this picture of a moon, because I want to, I want to really demonstrate to you how uh, this idea of the lighter, if we make something lighter in value, how it starts to go back in space. So, for example, it, by the way, it's, we call that atmospheric perspective. And what atmospheric perspective is, in, is when there are water, all the water molecules in the atmosphere get between our eyes and whatever it is that we are looking at, those objects that are in the distance will become uh, much more uh, uh, lighter in value. Uh, they will lose contrast. And it's, it is because of all the water molecules that are between our line of sight. So in this example, I have the moon here. And the moon, as you can see, is in full value. It's, it's full contrast. This moon picture was probably taken with a telescope late at night. And there was no, no atmosphere between it. So watch what happens here. Watch what happens when I start to lower the opacity 
and it will magically <laughs> almost go back in space. So just watch here. If I keep bringing it down a little bit, it starts to look like, wow, it's at the, now it looks like it's at the same distance as the mountain range. And if I bring it down even more, now, now it looks like it's gone way back in space. So you have the moon in the distance, then we have our mountains, and then our trees and our buffalo. So you could see that as we increase the contrast of an object or bring it into far more clarity it jumps forward if we uh, drop that contrast back we can make the object fall way back in space all right so it's just something to remember as you're drawing um, um, out in, in outside environments those objects that you want to be the furthest away make sure they have the uh, least amount of value okay any questions on that nope looks like we're uh, back up again looking uh, pretty good there so I'm gonna take our moon out of our picture because I don't want to draw it it's not part of our <laughs> picture so we'll just leave it we'll leave it hidden for right now but uh, I hope that you got my idea there okay let's go ahead and get started and uh, Let's just remember our, our basic steps as we as I draw anything. And we usually go from uh, gesture, volume, and into detail. Okay? And in this case, sometimes gesture can be the, be the same as shape. And then, of course, shape will turn into volume. So what I mean by that is if you had a shape, here's a shape of a square, then we might turn that into a volume, and then we might turn that into detail, and this detail plus value is where we're gonna start adding that. And let's just kind of bring that in over here. And as I start to add value to it, we really get a sense of, uh, of dimension light and dark okay pretty easy we go over that every week it's important to really uh, get that into our head all right let's go ahead and get started here <clears throat> first thing I'm going to do is uh, establish uh, some type of border I like to do that when I draw. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna squint my eye just a little bit and try and get an idea of of the shapes of how this thing is uh, breaking down. And one thing you can do as you are thinking of your measurements, you can kind of put a mark at the halfway point on this drawing. And that might help to break it down just a little bit as you uh, get these different pieces. And so right now I'm just going to draw very lightly. Squint my eyes so I can get an idea of these uh, different shapes. I'm only concerned with shape right now. looking at using both positive and negative shape. What I mean by negative shape would be something like this. I could look at the negative shape, look at that, and try and match that. And if I can match that, then I know the positive will, will work as well. So we jump, we really jump back and forth when we are, uh, using different tools of measurement to create uh, to create our drawing. All right, let me get this uh, bison in here. Now I can see just from my little uh, mark here that he is like halfway. I'm going to turn down the heater there. Hold on here.
yeah, it's the time change uh, here in the United States has caused it to be uh, brighter at this time. That's kind of surprising. <laughs> so, all right, so let's get on to our little buffalo here. So I'm just looking at the outside shape of him right now, and I'm trying to get a uh, just just a position here. I'll come I'll come back work in the details a little bit later. And let's get this other guy. He's kind of at a three-quarter view. Just trying to get a sense of where these guys are at. We have this little uh, <coughs> uh, embankment coming up here, and that's kind of going behind this guy. I can see it's like a little, a little hill here. Looks like. And then we've got some uh, grasses. These these grasses here in the foreground are going to be real nice when we start working with scale. Scale is another tool that we can use to create depth in our picture. So, all right, let's go ahead and now I got my uh, basic uh, drawing down here. Let's go ahead and go into these shapes now and start to develop them a little bit more. As I'm looking at this mountain range, Immediately, I'm going to separate the darks from the lights. Now, if I look at the snow in the mountain range, there's snow that's in shadow and snow that's in light. And right now, and there's rock that's in light and rock that is in shadow. Right now, I'm only concerned with separating that those things that are in shadow versus those things that are in light. So I'm going to try to rough in those... Uh, big areas, those big shapes, okay? And squint my eye here to kind of get a feel where those will go. This big mountain range looks like he's creating a shadow on that side over there. You got this big tree over here. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and start working this down now. I'm going to uh, go into my lighter areas here and I'm just going to start to outlining the difference between the rock and the light side, the rock and the snow. And I'm gonna just drop a little just a little tone in here. Now, mind you, I want to be careful that I don't go too dark. Because the whole area in shadow is going to have to be darker than the area that's in the light. Holding my pencil very lightly as I do this. Very lightly. And if there's any uh, questions, I'm happy to answer them. But I gotta also Pay attention here. I'll go off the edge. <laughs> okay, here we go. All right. Now I'm just kind of going back in and working, working the outline of my mountain here with short, short little uh, strokes, thinking that this uh, mountain range is pretty rocky, pretty edgy up there. Always looking for straights and curves, okay. Going back in now and just working these shapes, I'm going to keep my eye on the time here. And I, I think for drawing's sake, I'm going to really focus 
on the top of these mountains and then if I will start to let them fade slightly toward the bottom. And I'm using like, I'm thinking of using surface lines here. And tone. When we're uh, working with big areas like this, it can become you could get lost in them, lost to where you where you are at. <clears throat> but we'll just keep. That's part of it. Look at this. This is beautiful right in here. We've got this big ridge coming down. And I definitely want to. Uh, showcase the the light side and the dark side there that's it looking okay this is all going to be in shadow so it's a constant uh, battle to uh, keep my lights light and my darks dark giant boulder here okay let's come back up here a little bit there's some exposed rock and I'm just gonna for me just give it some texture there now one thing one thing I just did if you may not have noticed and I'm going to zoom in here for a second. You know, I, I did this with intent. When I came down the top there, I, br I, came that I came down that, made that line a little bit longer, and then I worked up just a little bit. See what happens is that's an overlap. That will cause, that will cause this to be in front of that. So even with something that far away, I'm naturally thinking like, oh, where's, oh, I could create an overlap here in tone and value. And uh, it would help to create uh, depth. So like, like right in here maybe. There's a mountain range coming in there. Okay. I have to be careful here that I don't get too, uh, too dark in value. These are going to be in the light side over here. Yep. All this is in the dark side. <clears throat> you know, when, when I'm doing something like this, I will... Uh, quietly just put some music on or something and work through it of course I can't do that because we're recording but Coming, coming around here. Not trying to be careful not to go too... Uh, trying to get careful to have a nice even tone. Now if I was painting this, the uh, I would want to make sure that these values are blue when we are dealing with shadow usually the color the color of a shadow is going to be opposite of the light source 
so this light source, if this is, this could be morning or it's, it could be morning or it could be late afternoon. The uh, shadows are going to be a little bit longer. And uh, it could be very orange because the, I mean, the sun is very orange at this moment. Look what I'm doing here. This is interesting. Uh, right, right in this area. Let me uh, let me add a layer and just circle this for you. Look at this area right here. You see that? One thing I'm doing as I'm working, working that, right where I have the light side and the dark side, I'm just darkening the edge ever so slightly. And that darkening the edge will a lot of times give you some nice, um, nice volume to it. And it's because where it's lighter, that is reflective light. All the snow is... Um, bouncing light off of it so if you could find that edge where dark meets light and darken that up a little bit it will look really uh it'll have a lot of value to it it'll have a lot of volume to it all right I have probably gone too dark on that, but we'll see what happens here, okay? Okay, I'm gonna keep moving down now. I'm gonna leave the rest of my mountains as, as they are. And now I'm gonna look at this tree and ask myself again, where is the uh, dark versus light? Are there things that are layering? So when I'm looking at this tree, this is what I see. Squint my eyes, I see this right here. Okay, then I see this right here. And then I see this right there. Okay, let me erase that for you now. Oh. So that that is what I'm looking for here. So I'm just lightly dropping in these values here. You know, a big part of drawing is just the methodical resting. slowing down from the day and creating something. I am uh, <clears throat> just lightly dropping in the shadows area, shadowed area here. I'm going to come back and, and hit that up because it is the contrast. The contrast between those two are great. That's going to really help me to read what I'm trying to create here. I'm just going to use little strokes. Be very careful that I try and match that tree line a little bit. And have it not be so even. Remember, your mind is going to want to put some of these things in order. Yeah, don't be afraid of putting in these big blocks of value. Yeah, 
Look at, I'm going to switch over to back to the background here and look at that hill in the back. Something like that. Of course, then we have this bottom part here as well. Okay, continuing on here. And even this lighter color, I'm going to tone this in just a little bit just sticking with uh, short little uh, short little strokes here want to be very careful that I keep the lights separate from the darks. It's really what it comes down to. got some branches here and when I'm drawing my branches I'm just kind of pushing down and as I start to make my stroke I pull it up pull it up at the end and that uh, creates some nice uh, tapering and variation Just slow down, <clears throat> no rush. Just keep going back into this mountain here and adding tone to where I think the darker areas are. We got a little too dark up there, but oh well. <laughs> oh well. We'll just keep punching it down here, I suppose, huh? <clears throat> All right. Get to the bottom of these trees here. Yeah, they just kind of blend into the background a little bit, you know? Okay. Trying to make sure it doesn't get all perfectly even. This tree in the back, I'm going to just put an overall tone in. And then I'm going to come in with some of these. Oop, it's too much. Hmm. 
Okay, that looks pretty good. All right, let's let's move on to these buffalo here. I've been I've been waiting for these guys all night. All right, let's take a look at this big guy here. All right, so we have our we have our shape in place here. I can't leave this area alone. All right, I got my shape here, and let's let's kind of carve out. Think of think of that you're just like almost a, uh, a a sculptor. So there there's his head shape, and he's kind of turning away. And so we have his horns over here. In fact, you can't even see that horn. And I'm kind of working a straight line, look at that, straight line down the back, around there, and then we got we got an angle of a line right there, and then we've got some uh, his leg right here. And look at this this really cuts. Look at that edge right there. You see that? So let's go ahead now. That's I've got that <clears throat> shape in. I like it. I'm going to add some dark and lights now. So uh, I'm just going to do a light overall tone. And now I'm going to really punch in these dark darks. Okay, then I'm going to use uh, surface lines to uh, get a sense of the volume. Watch this back leg here. It kind of circles around and comes in like that. And his front leg here is practically completely in shadow. All right, how's that looking? Okay, I'm liking that. Let's see now. Yeah, we could probably work the top part here just a little bit more. And when I'm drawing, when I'm drawing like an animal that this is this small, I'm really looking more for value. than uh, uh, anatomy or anything like that. I could put a little bit in, but generally that's what we're looking for. All right, let's look at this other guy now. This other guy had looks like a regular bison, so let's... And, and look at that horn. That horn is huge. So let's, I'm going to try and draw around it. That way we can create some contrast there. And it's almost a straight line here. And then I can see just a little bit of a horn on the other side there. So we definitely want to capture that. And I can see his eye, so let's just see if we can kind of put something in there. And there's his hind leg. Let's get that in carefully here. Let's look closely at it. And now let's get the front end here. Okay. I'm going to add some more tone to the back of them here. I 
Yep, all I'm, all I'm doing is looking for uh, shape and value. Look how straight that line is right there. Boom. A little surface lines back here to give it the sense that this is working him. Okay, now look how different my my horn looks than his over there, which is fine. I'm going to live with what I got. Okay. I think those, those look pretty good. All right, let's get some of this... Uh, side of this mountain here and, and look at this now this hill you could do some nice overlapping here this is going to really give a sense that this is an embankment and when I'm saying overlapping I kind of mean like this sort of thing you see this that's what we're looking at here All right, and then there's this, oh wow, I didn't even see this before. There's this great shadow in the grass. It's coming in there. Straight across the picture there. Okay. And he's got a shadow as well over here. Let's kind of put that in. And he probably has a little bit of one as well. All right, let's go ahead and grab this. Uh, we've got some posts here and I'm going to outline them. Oops, boy, did I just blew that. <clears throat> oh, well. Look at that. See, even when I make a mistake, I just, you have to laugh it off. Okay. Yeah, see, I, I really, I got those messed up. Let's see if we can work some of these trees. These, even though they're not in the picture, I want to see if I can get some branches down here. Give a sense that this is a, really a grove of trees here. All right, it's looking pretty good, I think. I'm looking in the distance here now. I just wanna make some different variations in value. And I'm drawing uh, across the page with my uh, pencil here. All right, taking a step back. Okay, that's looking pretty good. How's the value in that? You know, they should probably be... I probably made my uh, mountains a little bit too dark there. <clears throat> Oop. All right, let's go ahead and work some of this grass in here. I'm going to really get a sense that this... Uh, The grass here in the front 
is uh, in the foreground. Okay, I'm going to continue this grass across the whole bottom here. And I'm even going to add a little, little bit of tufts of grass back here in the meadow where these guys are eating, grazing. Okay, just looking at it overall, it's looking pretty good. Add some tone to this guy. Add some more tone to this whole background area, just slightly. Okay. <clears throat> How's he looking here? This is this guy's head is too uh, too narrow, I believe. Darkening in this little patch of of shadow over here. I hope it doesn't come back and bite me. Some of these posts are facing the sun, so on the left side, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and drop a little thicker line on the, on the left, on the right side here of each one of them. There, that's gonna give a little bit of a feel there. Now, I'm just gonna kind of go in here and kind of fake. It's not really in the picture. But I'm going to add like this little hilly area in the back here. Is that looking good? Again, I, I think I went too, uh, too dark on those uh, mountains in the back. If something does look too dark, you could try and darken up the rest of it. Darken up the other parts of it. Okay, <clears throat> what did I do with that mess? Boy.
if I was painting this, I'd probably try and uh, take this whole mountain range behind me uh, back a step. That would really, uh, really cause it to uh, drop in value, make it make it fall toward the back here. Here's a fun little, let's see, let's bring our moon back in, okay? Let's bring him up forward here. Let's see what happens for fun. Let's put our moon back here, huh? Now, let's just bring him way back here. Look at that. We got a moon. <laughs> I got a moon in my landscape now. <laughs> you know, you know you've been waiting for that all night long. <laughs> Uh, let me come on get back here okay get back where you belong okay well I think uh, I mean, we kind of finished up a little bit early I don't want to uh, keep this party party going just to say we've kept it going <laughs> let's see let's Tone in some things. Let's tone in some of this grass down here. All right, I think I'm gonna call it. I think this turned out quite nice. I'm looking at it from a distance here, yeah. Uh, man, this, this whole area is really bugging me. This should all be in tone. I'll be in tone back here. It's looking a little bit better. This should be in tone too. Yep, that looks better, I think. All about controlling your values, you know? Let's go ahead and bring up, I'm gonna bring up these, uh, I don't know if that, if I can change this here, let's see. Nope, can't change it back, okay. All right. Well, I think that's it for tonight. I uh, I hope you all enjoyed that. Um, we kind of took a took a look at using atmospheric perspective and uh, change of value, looking at looking for shape, changing shape to volume, uh, looking for gesture, uh, thinking about objects that are closer to us are much bigger. For example, the uh, the grass that's growing versus the trees in the back thinking the trees as, as one big mass and breaking those down. So um, that's it for tonight, our Monday Night Live. I'm Kurt. I'm a dad who draws. Thanks for watching. If you made it this far, please, of course, they always say this on YouTube, like the video, leave a comment, <laughs> and uh, that helps me out tremendously. Okay, we will see you. We have uh, a couple links down in the description that you can access. A free PDF that shows the uh, uh, 10 different sketchbook habits. There's a link to a free class and there is a link to the daily draw. So uh, that's about it for Monday night. I will see you tomorrow and have a good evening everyone. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.